So we continue chapter two. We will look at an example about uh, Boolean expressions and how to simplify them. Let's say you have A plus A and B equals to A. So here what you can do to prove that it is equal to A, you can take A as a common factor. Okay, so it's going to be A plus A plus B. A is A times one plus A times B. Now you take A as a common factor, you will have 1 plus B, and 1 plus B as a rule is equal to 1. It's going to be A and 1, and this is equal to A. Okay, and these are the steps of the proof. When proving any uh, Boolean expression, you have to clearly write what is the rule that is used. So here in this rule, from A to A and 1, we use this rule. It is x and 1 is an x. And here what we did, we used the distributive law where we took a as a common factor. And here we did 1 plus b is equal to 1. So this is the rule or identity we used. And a and 1 is equal to a. This is the identity we used. So when proving in the exam or in the assignment, make sure you write the rule or identity that you used in your uh, proof. Our third reason for doing proof is to learn careful and efficient use of the identities. So how do you use the identities that we explained last time? And how to choose the appropriate identity or theorem to apply uh, to make forward progress. When I say forward progress, I mean by that to reduce the number of gates that are used in the expression. So notice here, please, I had A plus A, B. So here I have an AND gate, here I have an OR gate. When I simplify that, I am left with only A. Okay, so this will uh, make your figure or logic diagram easier to draw. We do another example. AB plus A bar C plus BC. We need to prove that it is equal to AB plus A bar C. How are you going to start thinking about proving this? A, B, is still here, so you don't need to eliminate. A bar C is available, but you need to eliminate, elim uh, eliminate BC, okay? So we start with the first, you have AB plus A bar C. What did we do here? We multiplied BC by A plus A bar. The rule says X plus X bar is equal to one. So I multiplied A, plus A prime into B plus C. This will lead to A, B, C plus A prime, B, C. Why did I add A? Because the term missing in B, C is A. This is why I added A plus A prime. So this is A, B. This is commutative law. When you move A, B, C here, it is the same as A prime C plus A, B, C is the same as A, B, C plus A prime C. So this is commutative law. And now what? You take A, B as a common factor. You are left with A, B into 1 plus C plus A prime C into 1 plus B. As an identity, 1 plus C is a 1 and 1 plus B is a 1. And A, B and 1 is A, B. A prime C and 1 is an A prime C, and we proved a consensus, okay? We will prove this now, so be careful. We will be doing X plus Y bar and Z plus X, Y bar. We want to prove that it is equal Y bar into x plus z. So we want to start from here and we want to prove that it is equal to this. Okay? So I will start with x or y bar. The first thing that I should do is I should remove the bar. So x plus y bar is equal to x bar and y bar. This is the Morgan's law. And you multiply it by z plus x y bar. Now, what do you do here? That's commutative law. So you will have to say that it is 
y bar x bar z plus y bar x. So I can take y bar as a common factor, and I am left with x bar z plus x. This is distributive law. Distributive law, if you remember, you take you take first plus second into second plus third. Remember, so it is x bar plus x into z plus x. This is an identity that says x bar plus x is always equal to one. So it is going to be y bar and one into z plus x. Y bar and one is a y bar. And you are left with uh, x plus z. Again, this is the commutative loop. So z plus x is the same as x plus z. And uh, this is the answer that I am looking for. Okay. So the rules that I used here, we start with the Morgan's law, which is x plus y bar. You remove the x will become x bar, plus will become an and, and y will become a y bar. So this is the first rule. It is the Morgan's law. The second rule is commutative because x bar, y bar is the same as y bar, x bar. Here we have the distributive law, okay, where you take y bar as a common factor. And now again, another distributive law where you do x bar plus x into z plus x. And this is x bar plus x is equal to 1. And then you get your answer. Now, we will evaluate. Uh, four functions okay so we start with x y z bar i want you to notice please with f1 that you have eight combinations y8 because i have three variables and two to the power three is eight so how do i fill the tooth table i fill four zeros four ones then two zeros two ones two zeros two ones and zero one zero one zero one zero one and this will fill my truth table Okay, I'll start with F1. If I am going to go over this one by one, it will take a lot of time. If you look at this place, when is the only case that I have a one? It is when x equal to one, y equal to one, and z is equal to zero. So I go directly to one, x equal to one, y equal to one, and z equal to zero. In this case, I will have one, one, and zero bar is a one. I'll have a 1. This is the only case where f1 is equal to 1. Instead of me going over the 8 cases to fill the truth table, I directly go to the case that will give me a 1 and put a 1, and I fill the rest of the truth table with the zeros. We will move to this. Who can help with f2? When is a case where I have a 1 in f2? Yes, please. When x is equal to 1. Exactly. So when x is equal to 1, because 1 or anything is a 1, it will give me a 1. So I check where is my x equal to 1. So here I have x equal to 1. I fill automatically where I have a 1. Next, please. I still have or y bar z. When is this case, please? When does this give me a 1 in y bar z? When y is equal to, yes, please? Zero. Zero. And z equal to one. So I look when y equal to zero and z is equal to one, I put a one. Is this the only case where I have zero one? No. I have also here zero one, but it is already filled with a one. Okay, so I don't change. I write here a one and I fill the rest with zeros. I move now here, please, to F3. Who can help? How do I find, where do I have ones in my F3? I start with this, please. It is zero, zero, zero. It will give me a one. How about this? It is zero, one, one. So this is the zero, one, one. It will give me a one. I have one more case, which is x equal to one and y equal to zero. And z could be either a zero or a one, okay? So it's going to be 1, 0, 0. So this is the case. 1, 0, 0. I put a 1. And I also have 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. I put a 1. And I fill the rest with zeros. We move to F4, please. Who can help? How did I fill the truth table of F4? Anyone? 
we need x equal 1 and y equal 0. Yes, so x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. But I have two cases of z, do you agree? So it could be 1, 0, 0 or 1, 0, 1. So I fill Yes, here. and 1, 0, 1. Exactly, so I fill here a 1 and here a 1. What else? Keep going, Jad. What do you think I should do with this? Yes, please. Uh, I have x bar is 0 and z and y equal 1 and z equal 1. But y is not here. Or I have x bar equal exactly. 0 and z equal 0 and uh, uh, and y equal 0 and z equal 1. Exactly. So these are the two cases. Okay, so you have x equal to 0, z equal to 1. So x equal to 0 and z is equal to 1. Okay. And x equal to 0 and z equal to 1 and I fill a 1. Okay, so these are four cases where I have a 1 and I fill the rest of the table with the zeros. Okay, any question, guys? I'm ready to repeat if you have any questions. You need to know that every time you have a value, let's say you have x, y, bar. Okay, z is missing. So you have two cases here. It could be x, y bar, z bar, or x, y bar, z, okay? This is equivalent y, because when you do x bar y, it is as if you have, between parentheses, z plus z bar, which is equal to one. So this is why x bar y, x, y bar, is actually x, y bar, z bar, and x, y bar, z. You got the idea? So when filling in the truth table and you only have x, y bar, you need to take two cases. Once where z is equal to zero and another where z is equal to one. Okay? Any questions? Doctor. Yes, please. Hello, Dr. Sema. Yes, true, I can hear you. Your question? Ah, okay. ايه بال بالكونسنسس ثيرم فينا فينا نستعمل ذات الريزنينج لنعمل لوجستيفيكيشن ام ممنوع؟ يس يس يو كان اوف كورس ذيس از كولد ديستريبيوتيف لو اوكي اوكي اند ذا زد بلس زد بار ايكوال تو 1 از انذر ايدنتيتي سو يو يوز ذيس تو ايدنتيتيز تو بروف ذيس اوكي اني اذر كويستشنز؟ لا ما قصدي ايدنتيتيز Yes, you can directly use it, you mean, without proof? Every time you have to use an identity, you have to uh, list no it. Uh, Every time you have to use an identity, okay. you have to write it. Which identity did you use? Here, I use two identities. The first is the distributive law, and the second is z plus z bar is equal to 1. Uh, yes, Anthony, you can write your question. I cannot heed you, but you can write. What is F2? You want me to repeat it? Anthony? Okay, I will repeat F2, okay? F2 is you have X, so you check where X is equal to one, you fill them. So this is one, 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 because X is equal to one, and one or anything is a one. The second case is uh, Y bar Z. Y bar Z is going to be zero and a one. What about X? It could be zero, zero, one, or one, zero, one. So these are the two cases where X is equal to zero once and X is equal to one in the second type. Okay, yes. X is equal to one at the first level, yeah, and here. Okay, so here, X is equal to one, you fit it. And then you check Y bar Z. So Y bar Z, this is the first case. Okay, and one zero one. This is the second case. It's already filled with one. Okay. An application of Boolean algebra. You simplify to contain the smallest number of literals. Okay, I will explain what do I mean by a literal now. Literal is the variable. So a is a literal. B is a literal. Okay. So if you want to count the literals in the first line, you have one two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 15 literals in the first, okay? 
After I do the simplification, let me count the literals. I have one, two, three, four, five literals. Okay? So I want you to notice how the number of literals is reduced when I simplify a Boolean expression. Okay? How did we simplify it now? You do first year commutative law where you move A, B, C, D, you move it to here. So this is commutative law. So you are left with A, B plus A, B, C, D. And another thing is you move this next to this so you can take common factor. So again, this is commutative. Now you take AB as a common factor, okay? It's going to give you AB plus ABCD. So this will leave you only with AB. And you will take A bar C as a common factor. So D plus D bar is a one. You are left with A bar C. And this will not be simplified. We still have it here. Now, what can you do? You can take B as a common factor, okay? So, what we used here is distributive law. It is A plus A bar into A plus D. And of course, A plus A bar will give me a one. So I am left with A plus D. So notice, please, how I moved from 15 literals to five literals. Boolean expression will always reduce the number of literals, or at least you try to reduce the number of literals when you simplify it, okay? You could read uh, to a certain extent you could reach to a certain extent what you cannot simplify any further. So this will be your last. Yes, Rabia? Okay. Uh, can, you, can you please repeat from the second line because I didn't actually catch up. Uh, it was okay. too fast. So from please. the second line to the third line, what did we do? We took a common factor with this. So I am left with a, B, and A, B, C, D. And here I took common factor, which is A bar C. Notice this is A bar C here, and this is A bar C. So I took a common factor here. Okay, now how would you, how would you, uh, when you take common factor between this and this, you are left with A, B into 1 plus C, D. Do you see it? It is A, B into 1 plus C, D. 1 or anything is a 1, so I am left with A, B. Okay? And here it is A bar C into D plus D bar. So again, this is equal to 1. Clear, Rabia? Okay, so from here to here, we took... Uh, let me change this. It's going to be A, B into 1 plus... C, D. Do you see it? Okay, so it's going to be A, B into 1 plus C, D. It is equal to 1, and this will give me only an A, B. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, we move to the Morgan's law. Yes, true? Damon, when there is less literals, yani fi less op operations, yani fi less gates, Mr. Melon. Yes, yes, of course. But be careful. Literals is not a gate, okay? A literal is letter A. It is the wire. The and that you have between A bar and C is your gate, okay? So there is a difference between literal and a gate. Literal yes. is the wire. The gate is between A bar and C is an and gate. Here it is an or gate. Here it is an and gate, okay? And here it's a complement, and yani it's a not gate. So literals are not gates, okay? They are not the same. Okay, yes, please. Can we replace uh, A or a, or a C by 0 and 1? Can you replace, repeat please, your A by a 0? Is this what you said? Yes. Uh, or no, cannot. Okay, I'll tell you. When you see the letter A, yes, I'll tell you. When you see letter A, this means that A could either be a zero or a one. So, okay, so it's not only one case, so I replace it by a zero, because it also could be a one, okay? Every literal has two variables or two cases. It could be either a zero or a one. So A bar C, A could be a zero, A could be a one, and C could be a zero, C could be a one, and you have four cases. You got the idea? So you cannot replace a variable by one value only. 
Okay, it's a variable. Okay, thank you. Variable means that it could take more than one value. And here in the case of Boolean, it takes two values only, either a zero or a one. Okay, so when filling the truth table, you are actually taking all the cases of the variables. Are they zero? Are they one? What happens? What's the output? Okay, so you cannot replace it by only zero. The Morgan's law, it will help you find the complement. When I say complement, it means when you put a bar, so let's say this is your F, okay? And you put a bar on top of F to find F bar. How does this work? You have X bar, it will become an X. The, and, the dot here will become a plus. Then Y will become a Y bar. The dot will become a plus. And Z bar will become a Z. Now this plus will become a dot. So I have now between the two terms, this is called a term, I have between the two terms a plus, when I do bar for it, it becomes a dot. X will become an X bar and will become a plus, Y bar and Z bar. Clear? Okay, so complement will give me the opposite of the output. So if F is giving me 0, 1, 0, the complement will be 1, 0, 1. They will be uh, complemented, okay? If we look to this another example, you have a bar, do the bar of it, it will become an A, plus will become a dot, B bar plus C bar, and this is and D bar, it will become plus D, and this plus will become an and, and this E will become an E bar. Clear about the complement? The Morgan's law is used to complement a function. Okay. We will start now with a new part of the chapter. It is referred to as canonical forms. Okay. It allows you to compare to compare for equality if two functions are equal or not, and it is a it has a correspondence to the truth table. So you could represent the uh, function, the truth table, in canonical form. You will see now. We have two types of canonical forms. We have the sum of min terms, and we have the product of max terms. Okay, they will be clearer now. We start with a min term. Okay, when you read x, y, this is telling me that they are both 1, right? How about x, y bar? This is telling me it is 1, 0. And x bar, y, it is 0, 1. How about x bar, y bar? What do you think, Joe? X bar, Y bar, it is zero, zero. That's what is the question? X bar, Y bar, what is it equivalent to? It is zero, zero. You agree? Okay. If you have yes. two, two variables, let me write them down. This is X and this is Y. Having two variables, you will have four cases. Zero, 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 one. 1, 0, and 1, 1. By looking at this 0, 0, it means x bar, y bar. And what about 0, 1? What is it? Yes, Rabia? It's x bar, y. It is x bar, y. What about 1, 0? It is x. x, y bar. y bar. And 1, 1, it is x, x. x bar, uh, it's x, y. x, y. It oh. is x, y. Very good. What do you call these? They are called min terms. So I have four min terms if I have two variables, okay? Two variables, I have four min terms. We move to max terms. In max terms, it is as if you are having, check this please, as if you are having x, y, do bar for it, it will become x bar plus y bar. Okay, so this is x bar plus y bar, and you actually have, uh, they are both complemented, okay? So I had the x to be a 0 and the y to be a 0. You complement it, and you will have x bar plus y bar. Again, in max terms, you have two variables, and they actually produce uh, four combinations. Okay, clear? Doctor? Yes. Uh, I disconnected. Can you repeat, please? Yes. So this is when you have x plus y. It is 
uh, max turn, not a min turn. In max turn, you are actually doing the Morgan's law of min turns. Okay, so in min turns, you have x y. When you bar it, you are going to have x bar plus y bar. So this is the complement of here. What you are seeing is the complement of x y. See? Do you agree? So it is x bar yes, plus yes, yes. y bar. So a max turn is the complement of the min turns. We will start with the min turn oh, okay. at index zero. How do you refer to this? You refer to it as m zero, where the max turn is big M zero. Okay. How about the one? It is small m one, small m two, small m three. Here you have big M one, big M two and big M3, okay? How do I think about it in other way? So check here, please. When you are, to when you are talking about M0, you are talking about index 0, 0, and if you have two variables, X is a bar, Y is a bar. So this is the example of M0, 0. Let's do another example, and I need your help. How about M2? Who is helping? Carmen? M2. How would you write number 2 in binary? Number 2 in binary? Uh, zero. Okay, Not one zero. zero actually. How do you write this in min terms? One, it means I have an X. Zero, it means I don't have a Y. Right? Do you example? So what about number three? It is actually in one one. Do you agree? It means I have an X, I have a Y. This is zero, one, zero. So I have an X, I don't have a Y. This is a zero, one. I don't have an X, I have a Y. And this is zero, zero. It is actually X bar, Y bar. You got the idea? We move to max terms. Max terms is also zero, zero. It is also zero, zero. Okay, but in max terms, it's the complement of it. So it must be having a one and a one. So you could, when you're complementing it, okay? So this is the zero, zero, and this is for the zero, one. Okay, this is the one, zero, and this is the one, one. You need to know, in max term, when you have a 1, 1, it is actually x bar or y bar, okay? Because this is the max term. It's the complement of the min term. What is the index? Index for the min term or max term is expressed in uh, as a binary number. It is used to determine, it is actually used to determine uh, whether the variable is shown or not, okay? Min terms, you have one, it means not complemented. Zero, it means it is complemented. So when you read zero, zero in min terms, M zero, it is actually zero, zero, it is actually X bar, Y bar. This is for min terms. In max terms, when you read a zero, it is not complemented, so the opposite. So zero, zero, not complemented. It's going to be X or Y. Clear? So this is the difference between min terms and max terms. So see here, the 0, 0 is actually X or Y for the max term. Let's say now you have three variables. Having three variables, the order is going to be 2 to the power 3. And 2 to the power 3 is actually you have eight cases. And for min term, let's say min term zero, okay, it's going to be zero, zero, zero. So actually, I don't have an X and no Y and no Z, okay? So this is for the uh, zero, zero, zero. What about the max term zero? It is also zero, 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 but in the complement zero in max term, it becomes a it means a one, okay? So it's going to be X or Y or Z. How about min term six? How do you write number six in binary? It is one, one, zero. So it is actually X, Y, 
and Z bar. Okay, how do you write max term six? It is also one, one, zero, but the one is complemented. So you have X bar, one is complemented plus Y bar, and Z is not, it is plus Z. Okay, so this is how you write min terms and max terms in canonical forms. Any question, guys? So we start now with the use of the min terms and max terms. Notice, please, now I have min term zero, okay? But I have now here four variables, so notice, please. In min term, zero is zero, 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 zero. If you write it in min terms, it is small m of zero, and they are all zeros. It means I have a bar, b bar, c bar, d bar. Moving to max terms, it is also 0, 0, 0, but the 0 in max term is A, not A bar, plus B, plus C, plus D. Okay? How about when you do the min term 1? It's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. So A bar, B bar, C bar, D. Who can tell me, please, what is max term of 1? It's A plus B plus C, and in the end, D bar. Plus D bar. Then we D bar. Exactly. Who can tell me what is the min term 3? It's A bar. A bar. B bar. B bar. C, D. Right? C, D. Exactly. So the max term is big M of 3. It's going to be A plus B, plus C bar, plus D bar. Why? Because it is 0, 0, 1, 1. We move to this. Who can help, please? What is the max term of number 13? Let me explain 13 first. I have an 8, I have a 4, and I have a 1. This will give me a 13. What is the max term now, please, of big M, 13? A, A bar. A bar. Plus B. plus B bar, plus C, plus D bar. Plus D bar, exactly. Okay, you got it? Any questions about min terms and max terms? Okay, we will review the Morgan's law very quickly. If you are doing X, Y bar, it is equal to X bar, so X will become X bar, and will be plus, and the y will be y bar. So this is moving from m0 to big M of 0, okay, or any index. You also have x or y. Do the complement of it. So now this is a max term. I'm doing the complement of it. It will give me a min term. So look here, please, at the, uh, the Morgan's law. Max term equals min term bar, and min term equals max term bar. Okay, they are the same because they are the complement. Okay, M is the big M is the complement of small M. Okay, I want you to look now at this. This is called the K maps. K maps are used to simplify Boolean expressions. We learned how to simplify Boolean expressions using Boolean identities. Okay, K maps are another way of using. Uh, came up to optimize Boolean expressions, okay? I want to order them for you, okay? This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What are we doing here, please? These are the min terms for two variables. I will start. When you say 0, 0, it means you have x bar, y bar. Who can help with this? What is m1? It is m1. What is it, please? It is 0, 1. x bar, y. Very good. What about m2? It's x. 
X Y box. Exactly. How about M three? X Y. We move to max terms. Max terms. I want you to notice that where do I have the zeros are my max terms. Here in min terms is where I have my ones. In my max terms, where I have the zeros. Okay, so we look here at the values. So this is the zero, zero. It's going to be, yes, please. How do you write this max term? It is. It's x bar, y bar. Is it? X bar or y bar. X bar? No, it's x, it's x, y. X plus y. That's it, it's x plus y. Okay. Why? Because you have to do the complement of it. The zero will give you an X and the plus will become an AND, okay? And the Y bar will become a Y. So it's going to be X plus Y, right? How about this? What is it? The M3, big M of three. Yes, please. It's X, X, bar, X, X bar plus, plus bar. Y bar. Graph. Okay. In the function table, each min term has only one and only one present in the two to the power n terms. So m of zero is zero, zero. Okay. It wouldn't have any other uh, min term. And each max term has only one zero present. Okay. I repeat myself. In min terms, you look where the ones are. In max term, you look where the zero are. We have to notice that, that in min terms, we do OR, okay, for the min terms. And in max terms, we do product of the max terms. So this is referred to as sum of min terms and the product of max terms. We will start with this uh, example. F1 equals M1 plus M4 plus M7. And I have here three variables, which is uh, 0, 0, 1. Yalla, who can help, please? What is M1? It is, yes, please, 0, 0, 1. You agree? What is M4? 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. Very good. What is 7? 1, 1, 1. 1, 1. Automatically, M1 will be, yes, please, X bar. Y bar, Z. Bar, Z. How about 1, 0, 0? X, Y bar, Z bar. How about 7? X, Y, Z. Did you get them, guys? By filling the truth table, okay, let me erase these. By filling the truth table, you check where do you have your ones. I have my one at the M1. So this is my M1. So here I have a one. I have it on M4. So this is my M4. Here I have a one. I have it on M7. So this is my M7. I have a one. Notice please the rest are filled with zeros. So this is telling me where do I have ones. It is also written as F equals sigma M of one comma four comma seven. This is another way also of writing. Okay, you check which min terms have ones in them. Yeah, who can help please? What is M2? Zero one zero. You have five variables, be careful. Zero, 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 one, zero. Now you are right, okay? What about M9? Zero, one, zero, zero, one. Very good. Who can help? Anybody else? M17? Uh, one, zero, 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 one. Very good. How about M23? One, zero. Oh. One zero one one one. Yes. Clear? Okay. By looking at this place here, how do you write it? It will be, yes, who can help? 
It will be a bar, yes? Bar B, B, C bar, D bar, E. Very good. How about this? A, A, B bar, C bar, D bar, E. Bar, E. You got the idea? So this is how you do midterms. We move now to max terms. Yes, please. I know how to move the A bar bar. Please give me the 0101 binary. So this is number two. Number two, you don't have a one. You have a two. No four, no eight, no 16. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What I'm about good. here? You I'm have a good. one. Okay. You have a two. You have a four. No eight. And a 16. So add them, please. 16 plus seven will give you a 23. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. We move to the max terms. Yes, your help, please. M, zero. What is it? That's easy. They are all zeros. But how do you write it, please? X plus Y. You have, you X, have three uh, variables, right? Only three variables. So this is wrong what I wrote. It is zero, zero, zero. Okay? Yes, please. Okay. Then it's uh, X bar uh, no. plus Y bar. Max turn, max turn. Zero will be written X. Oh, mm. Y, Z. Okay. We move now to M2. M2 is zero, one, zero. Yes, who can help? X plus Y bar plus Z. We do also Z101. Yes, please. X bar plus Y plus Z bar. You got the idea how we complement in max terms? Yeah. Okay, and this must be between parentheses. Clear? And of course, M6 will be 110, and it's going to be X bar plus Y bar plus Z. Okay? Any questions, guys? So let me erase this. I want you to notice now, please, in the truth table. In the truth table, I check for my max terms, M0, so this is M0. I want you to notice that I fill it with a 0, not with a 1 Lightman terms. I check where do I have the zeros. So this is M0, this is M2, this is M5, and this is M6. I repeat myself, this is where I have the uh, zeros, okay? Uh, I also have the three, okay? Okay, how do I write it? It is written F1 equals product of big M of zero, comma two, comma three, comma five, and comma six. This is the product of max terms. Don't you notice here you have a product? So this is why it is the product of max terms. In min terms, I had sigma of min terms because I was adding up the min terms. Any questions, guys?